I got in the hugest fight with my boss the other day. It was awful. We communicate so, so well. Have you ever heard anybody say something so preposterous before? Me neither. Good morning. I'm Eric Eisenstein, the avian Rebbe, and I teach Jewish wisdom seen in the beauty of birds. Today, we're going to be talking about communication. Specifically, we're going to be talking about part two of communication. This is the follow on to last week's video. And we're going to be discussing how the miscommunication between Moses and the people at the base of Mount Sinai led to all the problems that ensued. And we're going to be looking at birds in Austin, Texas, and what they can teach us today about communication. So you put it all together, and we're going to take the lessons from back there and out here and put it all right here, right in our own daily life. Be sure to stick around until the end of this video, when at the end, I will give you two action suggestions on how we incorporate those lessons into our daily life. Ready? Okay. A quick recap before we head out. Remember, the story of the golden calf and Moses. Moses tells the people, I'll be back in 40 days. I'm going up to the top of Mount Sinai. And they say, okay, we'll wait. 40 days pass, ish. Moses doesn't come back. The people panic, they make the golden calf, all the problems that we have from there. That's the simplified version. Imagine though instead if Moses had said, hey, I'll be back Thursday the 14th at three o'clock in the afternoon. We would not have had all of these problems. Moses was counting 40 days from tomorrow, the people were counting 40 days from today, and that miscommunication is the essence of what caused our problem. Ready? Let's head out to the trails and we'll see how we can learn a little bit and maybe make it better for ourselves. Let's go. Good communication depends upon using the right medium. Here's a perfect example of what it is that I'm describing. Look closely at this photo. In fact, you have to look very closely in order to actually see the birds. They're camouflaged. Their coloration and their static position make it difficult to see them against the background. Now notice how when I start the video, everything becomes easy to see. Some messages, like this one, need motion. They need to have that fourth element, time, that makes it clear what it is that you're trying to get across. And so as you think about the right way to communicate your message to people, think about the medium that you're going to use. Some messages are simple and easy. A quick text is all you need. Others are really difficult and challenging. And a face-to-face -face conversation and maybe multiple face-to-face -face conversations is the only way to be able to get that message across. Think about your medium. This is an area where people routinely make mistakes in communication and really end up hurting not only themselves, but the intended recipients as well. A misunderstood text, an email that doesn't convey tone, these kinds of things can be disastrous. Make sure to focus on your medium. Framing your communication in the right way is absolutely critical. In this first photo, it's really obvious that the sparrow is the focal point. There's no question about it. Now look at this next photo. Here, same bird, same place, but the message gets lost. So does the bird. Think about when you're framing something, what it is that you want people to take away from what you've told them, what you've written, etc. Figure out how it is that you can center their attention on precisely what it is that you want them to learn. And be aware that although there may be ancillary messages or subsidiary information that you do need to get across, how do you make clear that those are subsidiary? How do you make clear what the one idea is that they absolutely must get, even if they lose or don't quite appreciate some of the other elements of your communication. That's what we're trying to get at 
by showing how this framing can make such a big difference. I hope you're enjoying this morning's interrupted walk. That's what I call these experiences where we go out to the park and we wander and we wonder. Hopefully, maybe even we see something beautiful, learn a little bit, heaven forbid. If you're enjoying it, as I hope you are, be sure and hit the subscribe button down below. Maybe even give it a like. It really helps YouTube. It helps me. I get a little dopamine hit. All is good. Okay? Great. Back out to the trails. Everyone knows that it's all in the details. And this chipping sparrow is a perfect example of the importance of a comprehensive look with additional detail. When I first looked at this photo, when I first saw this bird from the original perspective, I thought it was something else. And it was only as I watched the video unfold and was able to slow it down and take a look and get different perspectives and other angles that I realized that it was actually a chipping sparrow. Now, in this particular context, uh, particularly with sparrows, if I had thought that it was a sparrow A instead of sparrow B, it's really not that big a deal. But think about other communications in our life where we're trying to convey something important and a lack of detail, a lack of alternative perspective and full context deprives somebody of the actual message that we're trying to get across. That, of course, can be disastrous. The sparrow in this particular case is perhaps a silly example, but it does illustrate the importance of providing people with sufficient context and sufficient detail without being overwhelming that allows them to understand the fullness of what it is that you want to convey. These least sandpipers in flight can be almost distracting. And, and I hope that you'll focus in for just a minute because it can be a challenge. They're so beautiful to watch. It's like this unbelievable ballet where everything is perfectly coordinated and everything is almost magically synchronized that it can take our breath away. People can't move like this. Most of the animals or things that we see in the world can't move like this. Birds do. And so it really drives home this concept of group dynamics. The way that these birds relate to each other and move in concert like this is something that we're not accustomed to in an intuitive sense. And what it drives home is the idea that an individual and a flock can be very, very different things. Now think about it in a communications context. There clearly are messages that are appropriately delivered to one person at a time, as opposed to a group and vice versa. And when we conflate those two, we really run into problems. Think about the person at a large conference who calls out a specific individual in front of everybody for something negative. Not good. Think about somebody who praises very publicly when an individual does something great and it's shared with the entire group. Well, that's quite wonderful. Making sure that your message is tailored to an individual or to a group and the right group dynamic is absolutely an essential piece of communications. Make sure to get that right. Make sure that you are dancing amongst the birds in the same way uh, that being able to see these birds drives home how beautiful it is when we're in concert and aligned. I hope you've been enjoying wandering and wondering with the Avian Rebbe. And now comes the best part. We're gonna talk about action suggestions, things that we can do in our daily lives to enhance communication, make our lives, based on the lessons of ancient times and the beauty of the natural world, a little bit easier and a little bit better. Ready? Action suggestion number one. Go wide. Go wide. And by that I mean, and this is particularly for the guys out there because frankly we're terrible at it. Try to reestablish, try to rekindle some of the old relationships that you've had in life. We're bad at it. Think about our old college friends or people that we worked with years ago and haven't seen since. It could be anybody, it could be family, frankly. Let's try and come up with a way to make an opportunity to reconnect. 
All right? And let's make it simple. Here you go. Pick three people. Three people. doesn't matter who they are. Top three people that come to mind when you think, you know, I miss that guy. I'd really like to talk to him. Then get out your calendar. Four times a year, once a quarter, put that guy's name on your calendar. That's it. And each time his name comes up on the calendar, pick up the phone and give him a call. Four times a year, three people. You're going to make one phone call a month over the next year. But after a year, I think you're going to find that there's something really meaningful that's been established, reestablished in these relationships. Try it. Trust me. I've been doing it for a while, and it is a materially different experience. Okay? Action suggestion number two. Go deep. How many of us are lucky enough to have date night? It is the opportunity to put all away all the beeps and the blares and the buzzes and the things and just be with the person that we care about. But how many of us, yeah, we spend the time, but how many of us spend the time, well, spend the time? In other words, instead of investing the time. Okay, time to get serious. How do we make it more meaningful? Come up with an agenda ahead of time, and it doesn't have to be complex. One thing you want to talk about. But agree ahead of time that, hey, here's something that I'd really like to explore with you when we get together for dinner or dancing or bowling or whatever it is next week. One thing. And see if it doesn't really kind of create the opportunity to reconnect with each other in a more meaningful way than simply going out to dinner, you're both tired, and you spend the entire time talking about what happened at your day at work and your day at work and what's going on with the kids and so on. Yes, that's all important, but maybe you can make date night something even more important by going deep that way. Again, try it. See if it doesn't work. Come up with an agenda. Go deep. Okay, that's enough for this week. I will be back next week. I invite you to come with me. I look forward to the next Interrupted Walk. As I say, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. And in the meantime, be grounded. Fly high.